Let me give you this story. When you guys were young, you did not see the world like everybody else, and that used to bother you. That used to put you into a mode of observation because you did not think or, or perceive things like people explained it to you. You perceived it quite differently, but you hid it. You suppressed it. You didn't want that to ever come out. So you kept that to yourselves. You saw in your mind's eyes such wonders, certain things you knew that nobody else discussed. Even your belief was not like those around you, even concerning the Holy Bible. It wasn't. Let's face it. You were in somewhat of a dispute with other folks concerning the Word of God. You would hear them, give them all respect sometimes, but you were not on the same page they were on. As you grew, you observed. You observed, you grew, and you still hid yourself. The true you, you kept away from everybody. You protected that person that was given such gifts. You protected that person. You never showed the world that person. I bet you to this very day, hardly anybody has seen who you really are because who you really are was suppressed. See, when you were growing up, the more you observed, the more you heard, the more you became somebody else. In other words, you took some garments you made yourself and you put those garments on a character that fit into the world, that kind of served other folks, that blended because you didn't want anybody to see what you really were and your ideas and your thoughts because you scrutinized your own self and you said they'll never accept it. You were also frightened of rejection, and it used to cause you anger or sadness. And Lord knows you've been through much rejection. So when this took place, when this combination of things took place, the rejection, you, you came into your adolescence, and you began to walk into the world, and some people experimented, some did not. You were still different, and you tried your best to become part of this world, didn't you? You tried your best to fit in and to enjoy the world like everybody else did, thus trying many things. Well, that began a season in your life where you found out what the world was. Many years passed, and you said, that is not for me. Some of you barely made it out. It was like climbing into a hole, right? And water was filling up in the hole, and you barely made it out that hole. You had help, but you were in a hole. All of us were in a hole. While we were in that hole, we were forced to begin to recognize ourselves and how we really did mess up. And while everybody else may have said, well, that was somebody else's fault, we knew we had something to do with it. And you began to reflect. This is when your, your mind was open and everything else anyway. As I said in the beginning, you didn't think like everybody else. Now, with a few people you did share some of your ideas with that you thought would accept the way you saw things, they didn't, did they? See, there was always this person in your life where you thought, well, maybe they'll understand. So you freely started speaking about subjects. And for a minute, it seemed like, hey, they understand. But then they ended up, you know, kind of throwing you under the bus. They weren't quite understanding of what you really had in you. And you knew at that time you couldn't share these things. So essentially, many of you became somebody else for the benefit of somebody else, like you were hiding in the world because you didn't want that rejection again. And so for a long time, you've been on this trend of trying to not be rejected. You're tr frightened of it, terrified of it, and you really shouldn't be because no one ever told you the way it really is. So let me get into your minds real quick. See, the Lord had you born with a different concept of life, period. Nobody had to introduce you. You were drawn. Let me tell you something. So I'm going I'm to let's let's go ahead and open up the closet, right? Let's get this stuff off the closet because so many Christians are so frightened of this stuff. You were drawn to paranormal. Yes, I said it. Everybody's like, oh my, don't say that. Yes, I'm going to say it. You were drawn to paranormal things, to these extraordinary topics you were drawn to. And for some reason within you, as you listen to things, as you're drawn to these, you know there's some truth in it. You just don't know. You're trying to find out who's going to say that truth that I will recognize because it's not going to be found in traditional speech. It's only going to be found in this non-traditional speech. And so some of you guys actually went down that highway. You began to search and you didn't tell anybody about the exquisite happenings that took place in your life. Because, by the way, who would you share it with? You couldn't. All of you were born knowing some things. And here's what happened as you grew, as you got out that hole, as you faced rejection, as you became somebody else, you learned to suppress what God naturally put in you. Because it's rejected. Well, it was rejected by the majority of the world. It was rejected so much you said, there's no use talking about it. I'm going to be lumped in with these crazy people over here, and I don't want to look like them over here. Some of you were even sneaky, and you would praise the Lord one day and go listen to the forums that talked about the cuckoo stuff the other day. 
But of course, nobody could see you because you're behind the internet. You were good to go with that. And then people, for some, there was a season where Christians came out. They said, hey, don't search that stuff. That nonsense. And then you felt conviction. Wait a minute. Am I putting this stuff before the Lord? And so what happened was it drew you totally away from that topic into the word. What you didn't realize was that was no ordinary time. That was a time when you could have been lost in what you were searching for. And you had to have a foundation. So guilt came upon you. Conviction, right? A recipe came upon you. And you came over totally to the Lord. Still having these beliefs, you came over to the Lord. But what happened was you totally shut down the entirety of what God put in you. And it's almost like a piece of you. By faith, it came alive, but the other part died. Another natural part of you died. The part that God had placed some concepts in, it died. It started dying. And when it began to die, you were dying with it. You didn't even know that that's the majority of you. And you were trying to do everything, not looking into these subjects. But did you notice it was almost like you were being starved to death? There was no, it was almost like there's no, there's life in Christ. But you have lost part of your life and you don't know where it went. So let me show you what happened. You were drawn away from that topic because at that time you didn't have the right foundation to see what you will ultimately see. You have to have a foundation in faith to do that. So what the Lord did was he took you away from that topic totally, brought you into the fold to give you principles so that when that subject popped back again, now you would have a foundation in Christ and not be lost because you may not admit this and you don't have to comment, but while you were looking into those subjects prior to you having a good foundation in Christ, you were beginning to question some things. You didn't even know it, but that's a test. You begin to question some things you read in the Bible. And again, you didn't know it, but that was a test. And upon questioning those things, you really thought about it and you struggled with it. Well, how can this be and then this be and this? Well, what if this and this? You had those what ifs and you began to struggle. So the Lord said, nope, not yet. And he pulled you back and he gave you a foundation. Because I'll tell you right now, I was one of the ones used to pull you back from those nonsense searches so that you would have a foundation. And the Lord requires you to know him first so you can be safe. Then he can disclose to you the larger things, but you won't be lost in these ideas men put forward. See, you were born with your eyes cracked. That's why you felt like you felt. But you had to have a foundation so you wouldn't be lost because you were beginning to question things of the Messiah. And that's a no-no. That's unsafe. The Lord had you go through this period and even experience that so you would know, yep, I was starting to slip a little bit. So he yanks you back and he gives you a foundation and all of a sudden the world is now accepting of the subject you were born with. All this stuff they're talking about today, you were born knowing. You already knew it. You didn't have to go looking. You were trying to find proof of what you had inside. Most people right or not like you they go out there and they look at these subjects they're trying to see if it's real or not you don't need any of that you're trying to find something that goes along with what god put inside of you the devil didn't put that inside of you the lord did and so right now this very moment right now you're alive in christ yes but you know there's a portion of your life that has been shut down and you are still suppressing some things you know about and it is causing you you're it's almost like you're in a coma you've tried everything and nothing sets you on fire. And you know I'm telling you the truth. Do you know why? Because in order for you to be on fire, you've got to fulfill your call. You were embarrassed to talk about this subject to anybody else. You didn't want to be lumped in with the cuckoo heads over there and the cuckoo heads over there. And the Lord had to give you foundation so that you would have the proper context going forward. Or you were sh you would surely start going down the wrong path. But see, now you have that foundation. Yes, you hid it for a long time. You covered that up for a long time. And those that stood against you in that knowledge, when you knew something was real and they didn't know, you can even talk to them. Now, why are so many people like this? Why have they suppressed this thing inside of them? And then you read books like the book of Enoch. Then you read things like Revelation. That was known to us. Why are we so familiar with the concepts in Revelation and everybody else is frightened of it? You get excited when things happen in the world, but right now you're saying, well, I don't know, there's a piece missing. And so when you hear about earthquakes and volcanoes and things like that, because a piece is missing to you, the fire, it won't light up. The gas is coming out, but there's no spark because you're not free in what you really are. When you're bound up, you can have no fire. Fire comes when you're free. And when you sit in denial, 
of some natural things God gave you, there's no way you can be free because that's disingenuous. You see, there are people out there right now. I mean, listen, the reason God did not give this to most people, to the other folks out there, they don't need to go into this area. They weren't built to go into this area. That's why you're so stubborn. That's why you get an idea in your head. Nobody else can tell you anything because you have to have a mind like that. You have to have your head like that. You have to have your forehead hardened when you go into these areas because you're going to face a lot of people that just simply don't see it. But let me tell you something. You're entering into the days where all of it comes back. There are certain things people are saying right now, and you're thinking to yourself, well, I knew this a long time ago. I suspected that when I was a kid. Well, I, I saw that same thing, and that all this stuff is happening. But now that you have a foundation, now you can have a context, a biblical context for what people are seeing. The truth, you will not be deceived. You better understand that the angels are nothing more than another race of God's creation, and you are yet but another race of God's creation. You are made lower than the angels, but you're about to graduate. They are doing things on your behalf, and other angels are doing things against you. You better believe they're at war all the time. They stand against one another like forces. You've had the privilege of seeing them because you, you have the job of intercession. So you're almost like in between these innocent folks out here who know nothing and those angels. You're the ones to explain to folks. Those aren't from that planet that just, you know, just popped up out of nowhere. No, all of this is God's creation. And those are God's children up there. And some fell and some did not. And we're down here, God's children. And some accepted him and some did not. And those things up there guard or go against us. And some are in the earth. Some are not out in space. They're in the earth. And by way of influence, they mentally guide people on this earth if they choose to speak to them it's been this from the very beginning they manifest in many different ways to seduce and to maneuver people into believing in them enough that they'll buy their story any lie they tell them it's a war it really is a war why are they so attached to humanity you ask yourself what do they want with humanity they want to corrupt the babies they're old you are young they're fighting to corrupt you, to go against the Most High, because they are crooked in the head. This is an ancient war. And every time you give in to anger and violence and all those things, you give in to them. Your tools are not violence. Your strength is not hatred. Your strength is love, and your tools are powerful. Your tools can put a halt to a fallen angel. How about that one? You, by your little lonesome, can put a halt to a fallen angel. A powerful fallen angel you can put a halt to. Do you know why? Because of Christ and because of those who believe in Christ, you were born with that belief too. You can put a halt to the works of these things wherever you go. You can't stop all of them. That's not your job. Prophecy will be fulfilled. But you have an eye. Can't you see that you were born with vision to see specific people? You were drawn to certain people in this world. Now, I know you messed it up by dating some of them. You were never to date them. You were to help them. And you already know that. You just didn't tell anybody. You suspected that. You just didn't tell anybody. People were drawn to you so you could help them. And yes, many of us blew it, but it's okay. Because now you understand if a person is not fighting against them, they're going to be a target of them. Now you understand there is no middle ground. Either you're a casualty or a warrior. And in your case, that war is in you. You're ready to fight. You wanted to believe so badly it was real so you could jump into the fight. See, if you knew it was real without a doubt, you would have jumped into the fight a long time ago. But you had no foundation, and you may have been fighting for the wrong side. While most people can overlook this subject and they can't see it, you have a problem with those who can't understand that it's real. You were the ones when you were young and sounded like a thousand voices talking to you at one time. Anybody ever go through that? Of course you did. Some, Many of you did. When you were young, let me explain a phenomenon to you. When you were young, nobody else knew it, but there were times when everything got quiet and it sounded like you can hear a bunch of people whispering. Many of you had other things. You suppressed it. You suppress your dreams. And you already know your dreams are not natural. You're just Some of your dreams are intimidating. They are of a nature you can't explain. Very intimidating. Because the Lord puts something in you. Even right now, you're the ones willing. I, I've noticed something. Many of the people who were born with this are ready to fight darkness. They are. But the Lord had to give you a foundation or you would have become a part of that darkness because you are tenacious. And when it comes to those things of faith, that's when you're willing to give up everything. And you can't stand people who talk about Jesus Christ in a way that's other than honor. Where'd that come from? You didn't put that in yourself. Who 
are you to come to the defense of Jesus? And why is that in you? You don't even know, do you? Yeah, you, your fire is out because you suppressed all of that. You had no context for it, but you had to have a foundation in Christ. Now it's time for your foundation to be solid, to be sure. It's time for you to get back up on your feet and fight again. Because while you were out there searching without a foundation, many of you started losing the battle. And your life is proof of that. Now that you have a foundation again, you've got to get up on your feet. Don't you dare sit down where you are. You're not built to sit down. You're built to stand up. When everybody else says, I don't believe it, you're the one that says, I do. When everybody says, well, I don't think Jesus is coming, you're the one that will stand up in the crowd and say, yes, he will come. And nothing will stop him. See, when everybody loses faith around you, you're the ones that will still have the faith. You'll stand for the people who get weak like that. Why do you think you're right here right now? See, you're even in conflict because you love love itself. But even you yourselves know there's a conflict within you that will drive you to anger sometimes. They'll drive you to different places sometimes. You already know this. You don't know what to do with any of those things. If, if more Christians faced the truth, they would quit playing this game. They want to be seen as holy and wearing white robes and all this and the other. Nope. And start standing up where they are with how they are. Satan will start losing automatically. So, of course, you had to go through this. The fight is already in you. But if you lose that fight, your flame goes out, and that's what's happening. Many of you have had zip to fight. You're starting to think to yourself, did I really have that experience? Did I really dream that? Does that really mean anything? Aren't you at that stage right now? Was that real, or was that just me? Huh? How many have become their own psychiatrist lately? You're starting to question some of those things you went through over and throughout your life. It doesn't seem real, does it? It's a conflict right there. It's like something has a hold of your mind. Oh, well, that's going to be broken. See, now you live in a time where th these things will manifest and people will get hurt and people will become consumed. But foundation had to be real. It could be some false made up foundation. It had to be based on Yahshua HaMashiach only. Your relationship with the Lord is everything. He did not want you lost. Yes, you have things in you. You had no idea what to do with it. For many of you, it would have corrupted you because you had no foundation in Christ. Not a good solid one. She had to have one. You had to go through many things, many changes. I totally understand that. Now it's time to stand up in your faith much stronger than you were ever before because now you know some principles. You know, in fact, that Jesus is Lord. And you also know there's something you have to do. You know you're going to be smack dab in the middle of something. You have no idea where it's coming from. You don't care. You just know you have to be ready. And yes, you're by no means alone in the way you think. Because the Lord not only put that in you, but your brothers with you. Does everybody have this in them? No, they don't. There are many members in the body. Each member does something. Each member does something different to complement the other member. As a whole, we are the body of Christ. But he didn't call everybody for uh, the same thing. He called us for different things. We just so happen, you guys just so happen to be those who got excited when the world began to blow up. Earthquake hits, you get excited. Fireballs coming down, you got excited. You know why? Because you're excited, because you're saying the Lord is coming. Somehow you know within your heart the Lord is coming. Deep down inside you can't stand this world, and we know that too. Deep down inside you can walk away from many things, and you didn't tell a soul. I mean, give you an example of what you can walk away from. There are people in your life right now that other people would not understand, but you can clearly put them in the hands of God and walk forward into your mission. They wouldn't understand that. They would say you're cold-hearted. Well, you already know they would never understand. You have a mind about the reality in the spiritual realm that everybody does not share. Sure, you'd miss people, but you already know something very, you know, something deeper than the average person. Well, it's time for you to stand up. Now, I told you again, in the public domain, what do you see people doing? The same thing you were born knowing, what are they doing? They're hunting ghosts, and they're hunting E.T., and they're hunting monsters. Have you noticed? That's all they do. Hunt ghosts, hunt E.T., and hunting monsters. Do you know that this society, this generation, is based on those things? Look at the video games. It's based in magic, monsters, aliens, ghosts and goblins and zombies. It's based in supernatural things. What gains most of the viewers on television? Supernatural things. So right now, everything is turning supernatural, but supernaturally dark. That's why it's time for you to stand up. You knew that supernatural darkness would manifest one day. In fact, you felt like you had no employment. You have no employment. When things are normal, that's where you don't fit in. And you know I'm telling you the truth. 
That's when you become bored. That's when you become tired. If everything were to go on naturally, if everything would not have a supernatural overtone, you know, in fact, you would be dead inside. But as you see more and more supernatural things, you will awaken. While everybody else is folding up in terror, you will not be. Because somehow you already know. Right now, because of limited supernatural happenings, many of you feel lifeless. You feel so incredibly useless, and you know you do. You're trying to fit in like everybody else fits in, and it does not work for you. That's why you're tired, worn out, and everything else. Well, let me tell you this. All the supernatural things that were of old, they're coming back now. Now, many people won't be able to handle this, but you will. You're the ones that will encourage those that are around you that can never even look into that portion of reality. But because you already understand it, you're going to fight on their behalf. That's when you come alive. It's almost like you've been resting all of this time. And here's the marker. You know you're like this when things are normal in the world. That's the most terrible time of your life. While everybody else is enjoying the beach, enjoying this, that, and the other, it is absolute death to you. You don't belong in that time, and you know it. It's because you were called for a very specific time. And believe me, it takes a lifetime of training to stand up in that time. You just don't stand up in that time on your own. It takes a lifetime of training. You've been introduced to things. God has prematurely shown you things. He introduced you to some things, and it's almost like he shut the book for a time. But that was so you can have a foundation in Christ. You see that stuff, that stuff starts manifesting in front of you, and you have no foundation, you will surely be lost, and nothing would be able to bring you back. A lot of people, we may not be able to quite get with that, but we know that this whole everything is about to get torn up. We already know, we're just looking for what's going to do it. You get excited looking for what's going to do it. You may not know what it is, but you'll begin to recognize it when it comes. That spiritual knowledge on the inside of you, that will be unlocked when you need it. It will not be unlocked prematurely because then people will go write books about it. God's not going to exploit his knowledge he put in you. Have you exploit it to everybody else? No, it doesn't work that way. When he unlocks that truth, it's going to be used. See, with the Lord, let me tell you this. When the Lord allows you to understand something fully, it's because you have to use it. God doesn't allow you to understand understand things fully so you can go and capitalize on it. That'll corrupt you because he has a rule. What he has given you freely, you give freely to everybody else. So with real wisdom from above, it'll be unlocked so that you can utilize it. Your vision will change. You'll see more and more things. It didn't scare you before. You knew this stuff was coming. Nobody had to tell you that. You have an issue with life going on as usual without these things because you know it is a major part of life. That fire, it'll be rekindled. But you had to have a foundation first. Now do you understand what happened to your fire? Now do you understand why you're dull? But don't worry because you're about to stand up.